Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of our stringing tutorials. Today we will be talking about using a starting clamp to start our crosses as compared to the more traditional starting knot. And when I say more traditional, I'm referring to the machine you're using and the tensioning system that you're using, as well as the clamping system. So um, just like anything in life, you know, you're trying to find the method that works best for you and the method that's gonna provide you with the most consistent results. And so on this particular machine, with the draw bars, with the manual crank, I've always found that using a starting knot gives me the best overall playing racket at the end of the day. And as a stringer, what you're trying to do is find the method that works best for you on your machine and stick with it for the sake of consistency. Now, there will be exceptions, and this is why I think of all the videos we've done so far, this one might make the most sense for you to go on, click the article, and we talk about when to use the starting clamp, why we use the starting clamp. We'll get into some of that in the video, but I think in the article we go into a little more depth and things might be a little bit clearer. So, um, you will need a starting clamp, all right? But otherwise, we're not gonna be using anything else other than the draw bars, okay, as our clamping method. And you'll see as I go through this video why using a starting clamp on um, a Neos 1000 with the draw bars doesn't make a ton of sense, but it is doable, so I'll show you the method. The only time that I use a starting clamp to start my crosses on the Neos is if I feel like the grommets are damaged in any way. When you use a starting knot, you pull tension directly to that knot. You are pulling the only thing hanging on, the only thing holding it is that knot, and you've seen that in the previous videos. With the starting clamp, what we'll be doing is we're actually gonna be using the frame as the anchor. So the starting clamp will go here, the clamp is just holding the string, then we need something to anchor it against, it's gonna be anchoring against the outside of the frame. Um, every single clamping uh, system has an anchor. So with our draw bars, the anchor is actually the bar and it works quite well. With the swivel clamps, right, the anchor is like that little locking mechanism that you turn every single time after you clamp off. And with, um, the flying clamps, something like this, with the flying clamps, the anchor is actually another string, all right? And that's one of the reasons why flying clamps like aren't really, um, you know, your go-to, at least not in a professional stringing sense, because with the flying clamp, you're not gonna get as tight a final dynamic tension when you're using another string to hold against. There's nothing wrong with using it, and again, when it comes to consistency, or when it comes to a string job, consistency is all that really matters. But so far, we've already done our mains, and I'm just now going to string the first cross, okay? And when you are using a starting clamp, it is important that you pull a little bit extra because there's gonna be a little extra string that you need to reach the jaws here, okay? So that's one difference. Instead of pulling, you know, super close in or whatever, you're gonna to wanna to give yourself a little bit of leeway there. Okay, so now what I'll be doing is I'm gonna pull this through and I'm gonna be watching to see the end, okay? I'm not gonna pull it all the way through. I don't have the string going through anywhere else except the first cross, all right? and something like this is probably good, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how far I need to go to reach the tension head. In this case, with this machine, the fact that you can move where the crank goes means you don't need to give as much leeway as you will on like a constant pull machine where that distance is set. So something like this should be fine for me. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of my starting clamps. Um, I will say, okay, and this is not like objective, um, for me it is, but for other people it isn't. I find that the Babolat starting clamp is by far uh, the best one. On this machine with the crank, it doesn't really matter which one I use because this isn't a constant pull machine. So either one will be fine. I prefer the Babolat one, okay? But you could probably use the Gamma one as well. There are cheaper options out there, but beware some of the cheaper options don't have a nice coating on the inside. And so it's more likely that you're gonna damage the string. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this now. What I could do, because of the way that I usually do one ahead, um, I could even consider like stringing the next one and then clamping off, I'm a little bit worried that's gonna pull through. So I'm gonna go and push it right against the frame, and it's on like so, it's just gonna sit there. And let's go ahead and do one more of our crosses. Alrighty. righty. 
And we'll get this done nice and quick for you guys. All right, and send it through. And now again, I'm gonna not go all the way through because I'm gonna need to be pulling tension on that first cross there. Okay, so this should be fine. Now, what I'm gonna be doing, I'm looking at this to make sure that it's in the jaws deep enough. I usually line it up with where the little circles are on the starting clamp. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull tension. Okay, to this first one. So we'll watch when I pull tension. I, I wish you had a better view of this, but you're gonna see the starting clamp is gonna push against the frame, and that's gonna be the anchor. Now, if you don't go deep enough into the starting clamp, the string might slip through, then you're screwed. Then you really do need to cut out a new piece of string because you've probably damaged the string and it's gonna end up showing on, um, you know, showing when you go through on that first cross there. So I've now pulled tension and it is holding here. Now, one of the reasons why the starting clamp is not an ideal um, method on the Neos is because these draw bars are so big and we're gonna need to utilize the second draw bar in order to then like pull tension here and you'll see as I get there. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. And the Neos is so different to um, other machines in that you just have like the one clamp on doing your crosses, which is rare. Okay, so at this point, nothing's really gonna change. We're just gonna continue to pull tension. And the way to think about this is we're now gonna be pulling tension from this distance all the way around to this distance here. But then when I release, I'm asking that starting clamp to hold all the tension. Okay, so let's just get some room here. Let's pull our tension. Life is good. Now, when I release, all right, what's holding all the tension? Starting clamp is holding all the tension. Tension head is holding the tension here. So we're asking it to do a lot of work. Um, normally what you have are um, two clamps in here. So you're kind of distributing that and you're not asking the starting clamp to do so much work. Now, I've never had an issue on this machine holding it like that but it is something to be aware of and one of the reasons why it's not very common. So I'm actually gonna do about five or six of these crosses because I need room for my other drawbar to come in. All right. And the other thing I should probably say is, um, when you're using a constant pull machine and you use a starting knot, you are asking that, that uh, first grommet to do a lot of work, okay? And that's why on constant pull machines, you typically see people use a starting clamp to start out, but on something like a draw bar, you almost always see um, the starting knot because you're not asking that grommet to hold or to like have so much stress put against it. Right now, we've actually put the stress onto the outside of the frame. So the frame is doing the anchoring. And uh, of course, we will do an example on a constant pull machine and you'll see exactly what it is that I'm talking about with that. Okay, so. Pull that through, let's make sure that string looks nice and straight. Always make those little finger adjustments, it goes a long way to producing a nice and good string job, nice and straight. All right, we go in, I'm actually thinking about tightening this clamp just a little bit. And let's make sure that this is gonna be okay. Alrighty, good. All right, and now one, two, three, four, five. Okay, after I pull one more time, we'll see if it will work. I'm gonna pull and bring in the other draw bar, just for support more than anything else. And this might be a risk, so you'll see what happens if I screw this up, because I might screw it up. I might need to do one more cross here, we'll see. 
And if that's the case, I'm not gonna then do a one ahead method, okay? Because I don't wanna like have it holding in a weird place for too long. All right, so let's go in, let's pull our tension. All right, now what I'm gonna do, now that that's being held, is I'm gonna move this first clamp up here by the uh, starting clamp. And I'm gonna push my draw bar as far up as it's gonna go because I need room for my other draw bar. So I'm gonna push it up more than maybe I normally would, hold that in there, and then I need to grab my other draw bar, which this is not a good situation when you don't know where your other draw bar is. Okay, there it is. And we're now gonna bring this in and we're gonna see if we can reach it and hold tension. Okay, down here where we just pulled. And as you guys can see, we actually do have a good amount of room here. Well, it's a pretty close, but it does work. All right, I'm holding that in. I can now release. Life is fine. Now, the next step is one of these steps where it's not super necessary, okay, on this machine, but it is something I'm gonna do anyway, just out of habit. I'm gonna pull tension here to then release the starting clamp. So I don't wanna release the starting clamp without tension being pulled to it. It's more likely I'm gonna damage the string, but with the way that we're set up here, I technically don't really have to release that there, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull tension here and then I can remove that starting clamp and I'm feeling the string, no damage was done. Now with some of the other starting clamps, sometimes that happens. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and release this again. All right, and now our tension is being held everywhere throughout the racket. Let's just be good and pull that all the way through. And now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna tie off, okay? And I might use a Parnell knot if I can reach it and do it. Let's see, am I gonna be able to, whoa. -oh. So what did you guys just saw what happened there? It went past, which is never good. Okay, there might be room for a Parnell knot in here. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Good, all right, I've just done a uh, Parnell knot. It's a little bit different to what we've looked at before. And the reason I'm doing a Parnell knot there is just because I did a Parnell knot on the uh, other two. Okay, cool. All right, so notice that we used a finishing knot to, to um, tie off the crosses there as compared to our more traditional starting knot. So we did use a finishing knot there because we're never gonna be pulling tension directly to that knot. That knot is just expected to hold. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to finish up my crosses as I normally would. Now I'm gonna leave that draw bar in there at the top. Okay, you don't have to do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for a little layer of safety and security, but that is certainly not a requirement when using um, the Neos. You could release it, okay? But I find that it just adds that extra layer of security, produces maybe a slightly, slightly higher uh, dynamic tension at the end. And you guys know, when I get to this point in the video, I just wanna to try to speed through it so as not to waste your time. I just want you guys to see that method there. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And again, the primary reason you would use a starting clamp on the Neos is to try and save the grommets, put less strain on the grommets, and really technically kind of like less strain on the racket too, okay? But let's speed this up and get to the end. Okay, everyone, welcome back. We are getting to a point now where I have to flip the direction of the clamp and, uh, or the draw bar, I should say. And for you guys who've watched my videos in the past, for whatever reason, I always do that from the top. It doesn't make a lot of sense. That's just what I've always done. So now that we have a clamp that's already in there, we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna actually flip it around um, going through the bottom. So now what I'll do is I'll bring it out through the bottom and then I'm just gonna turn it like so. There's probably a safer way to do it, um, but I'll go ahead and I'll do it this way. So I bring it in, okay, and now I come up and everything's all good. So that's kind of the final stage 
of um, using this starting clamp method when there's a drawbar there. Um, if you've ever watched again, this is only because in previous videos I always go up from the top. I don't know why I do that. That's just what I always do. Um, and we're actually already now to our final cross here. And then we'll just be tying off and using a finishing knot as we always do. So um, very easy to use the starting clamp um, to start your crosses if you want to do that. Just remember though that on this machine with this tensioning method, once we hit our predetermined tension, the machine locks out. When I release the clamps and I do that, there's no additional pulling that's happening. It just finishes. Right, And so for me, using the starting knot actually does produce a little bit of a higher dynamic tension. Whereas on other machines, you have to be a little bit careful because if you use a starting knot and let's say you're, you're tensioning it really tight, after you've pulled tension, you're going to like clamp it off, it's still gonna keep wanting to pull tension. It's gonna keep pulling it to try to make it as accurate as possible. So it does make it extremely accurate but it is gonna put more tension, more uh, just overall torque onto that grommet and onto the frame, which is obviously something you need to be careful about when you're stringing. Okay, so just some things to think about and consider there. All right, let's just get this guy in, finish this up. All right, and be on our way. This is not my best uh, talking day. <laughs> of explaining things for you guys. So I do apologize, but this is one since we're reading the article is gonna help you a little bit more in understanding exactly the reasons why and when we would use that starting clamp as compared to the starting knot. At the end of the day, for all of you guys who are stringing, the important thing is consistency. Okay, that when you have a racket and it's in pristine condition, like you get a brand new racket or something, um, how are you gonna string that? Okay, that's the method that you wanna use most of the time. Um, well, really all the time, honestly, unless there's a reason not to. And so what I was explaining or trying to explain is that one reason why I would not use a starting knot would be if I saw that the grommets were really damaged or if I was using a really thin string and the grommet looked like it was bigger, like it's been widened out over, over the years, over time. Um, that can sometimes happen. And then the danger is that when you use a starting knot and you then pull tension, it can sometimes slip into the grommet, and that is an absolute nightmare to deal with. Um, it's not just as simple as, oh, I can start over now. No, it's like, good luck trying to get that string out of the frame. It usually doesn't end well. Okay, so we're gonna finish up here. All right. And again, we're gonna go ahead and just Parnell this bad boy here. And the only reason, again, the only reason I'm using the Parnell knot in this instance is because that's what I used for the other two. I wasn't really thinking about this as a tutorial. Okay, so just like that, we are done. Let's go ahead and uh, just trim the tail a little bit. We can now release these clamps. It makes no difference in, in which order you release the clamps. Maybe fine. Okay, this is a weird look. You don't see that very often. Unlock the machine, pull it out, and obviously you would go in there and trim those knots, but uh, that is the method that you use to start your crosses with a starting clamp as compared to a starting knot. So please read the article if you're curious for more information about when to do this, why to do it, um, all that stuff. And if you have questions, obviously leave those down in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, take care, everybody. Until the next video, keep on playing, keep on stringing. Bye.